and I apologized ten times and I said that I didn't want to be the moderator for this session because it's a very heavy topic, it's a big responsibility and all the speakers uh, with us are very important and I'm, I'm actually afraid of them so please help me a little bit here when we speak about uh, colonialism we assume that there should be some kind of occupation as if we are speaking about liberating arts from some kind of occupation I don't know if this is true and I don't know who's occupying whom so we are here to speak also about the arts that are non-European the objective of this session is not to speak about the consequences of the material occupation in our region, our Arab region, but it is to reflect upon reflect upon post-colonialism issues as a continuity for the cultural and intellectual colonialism and occupation. So we're not here to speak about the donors' agendas and the funding problems. No, we're here to speak about the content, about the impact of these uh, issues and topics on the aesthetic dimension of arts and on the intellectual production for our intellectuals and those who work in the cultural field. Also in this session, we will be speaking about the representation of the modern arts that are produced by artists coming from different Arab countries, not only in the international arena, but also on the local level. So we can find here modern artists that are also outside the formal aesthetics that we usually see in the supported artistic institutions in our countries. And we will also speak about the history of arts, modern and past, and we will also speak about what's happening now in the world of arts. We will also speak about the narratives and counter-narratives. So who writes uh, history through arts, who receives this history, and who republishes it? I also think that when we speak about occupation in this region of the world, we are not just speaking about the occupation by the West of the Arab region, but we are speaking also about the internal occupation, meaning the repressive uh, systems that try to limit our expression in our countries. So there are different levels of uh, occupation of our artistic productions in our region and we need to see what are the methods and ways that are used to go past it. I don't want to be long, I would like to give the floor to our guests today, but I would like you to say a few words without putting them into a meaningful sentence, only words to keep them in the background, like geopolitics of arts, geoaesthetics, the map, uh, the world map for arts, the presence of the Arab arts in the curricula. All of these are issues and topics that are important for me and our speakers are today to speak about them. So very quickly we have with us uh, Maya Speeb. She's a director and artist and she's also a founding member in Zukat and of course Mr. Tony Shakar. He's an architect and a professor of architecture and he's also a visual artist. 
and he is a professor of arts. I will be starting with Laila. We are speaking about decolonizing the arts and your last show, Zigzag, you worked with a documentary about the history of Egypt under occupation. So you were working on a material that is directly linked to our topic here. So what made you work on a documentary and specifically on history in theater? I will start from the end, actually. When I was studying, I was interested in reality and its different aspects inside the theater and I wanted to take it from the theater to what is outside to the reality. Since 2008, I became really interested in the theater that is linked to documentary and I had started also working on development theater or social theater, so all these uh, concepts bothered me in the beginning in the way I was dealing with the content and the form of theater. Then in 2011, there was a direct change. It's when I started having a different vision about writing uh, history because uh, there was direct uh, censorship uh, done and imposed to media, especially when it relates to torture and, uh, the, and the army machinery. And I started working on testimonies related to the violence that was uh, perpetrated by the army and the police. Then, in 2014, we had a festival, uh, the festival and they asked us to create a project related to the 100th anniversary of the World War One, and what were its impacts on Egypt, on Egypt. And then when I started working on that, I thought I saw that it, the consequences of the foreign education had an impact on our national narratives. And the most important thing in the, in the, in the introduction was the revolution uh, back then, in the beginning of the 20th century. So I tried, to, I tried to find something through songs, through the traditional songs, because we didn't have an open archive. So we went to the British archive to try and find uh, some documents and you were able to find uh, some investigations about the Shuba case and these investigations were uh, long and uh, I'm speaking here about 400 pages it was in uh, 1919 and uh, it was in a village in Giza, there was a lot of stealing, of killing and also rape. And what was even surprising is that in these investigations, there were details by female farmers, they spoke about the way they were raped. So the process was very long, so we decided after that to work on the zigzag show. And it was only about the showback incident. You face many problems when you want to start working on a documentary and when you want to look at history in a different uh, way, from a different angle. Because in the national uh, history, the way it was narrated, 
It's done. It was done by the state. It was done in 1952, and it's still the same until now. And this is still the same thing that we teach now in the schools. And they always show that the leaders are more important than the individuals, and more than the popular movements and the different forms. The archive in Egypt was something difficult to access because, first of all, it's not open. Only academic researchers or journalists, when they have a security authorization, can access these archives. And that is in Dar al Wasaq. And they need to be very specific in what they want to see in the archive. So they should have a specific question or a specific topic to only search for the archive that they need. And we knew about these uh, documents concerning the Shobak through the ordinary Egyptian book. It was written in English by Ziad Fahmi. And through this book, through this biography, we knew that there was a file. We knew where this file was and that it was with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the British Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And you're able to get it also. It's like 100 years old. So these investigations were done by the British. As for those who were done by the Egyptians, no one knows where they are, where, they, where these investigations are. There were other things that are translated in other archives. But, uh, for example, we, for the White Book concerning the independence, and that was used in the conference in Paris, we also don't know where it is. So it was unclear for the Arabic documents. So we worked on this file, and there were many, quest many questions here. Now, about uh, the rape that happened, this is only in English. But it's uh, complete. And the question was, what are we going to do first? Should we translate them? What will be the language of our show? Will it be English or Arabic? Because uh, these farmers, of course, spoke in Egyptian 100 years ago, it was difficult for us to use this language because we would be using our own imagination. This is why we decided to keep the documents in English. And we decided to keep the form of these documents and the same language so that we would be indirectly also showing to people that these documents are not available in Arabic and that these investigations were happening with the occupying entity. And also we chose to put these investigations in an artistic way. This is why it was very important to us to have a second layer because we were artists working in 2016 so we worked more on the way we were reading the documents how did people receive this historic material I remember when we spoke before that you said that people were really surprised and there was like a kind of uh, going more to the west because and not to the east so occidentalism and not orientalism as you said in Egypt the wanted uh, result was that people in the beginning uh, thought that these were translated documents from the investigations but the second result that we wanted is that we wanted to have some occidentalism or alienation so why more than 60% or 70% of the show was in English 
although the audience is Egyptian. We also tried to remind people that when we decided to translate on the screen these investigations, we decided to translate them into the literary Arabic because this is something that happened 100 years ago and we were not 100% sure of how they were said in the Egyptian dialect. So this is why we translated them into literary Arabic. So there were also different phases in translating them. For me, the use of, this, of these documents and the Shubak incident were all very important to link between two causes that we see today in the reality in Egypt. First of all, that such things are not available. And second, to break some stereotypes related to the farmer, to the female farmer, when uh, she is compared to the educated women in the city. And we also wanted to break the stereotype related to the evolution that was achieved in uh, these 100 years when you want to speak about things such as rape and uh, how society accepts us when we go and testify about this about trade. So we broke a worldwide and an international stereotype about the Muslim women because it was thought that it was in the tradition, our tradition, that uh, women would not testify about such a thing. So we broke that stereotype and now we see more that it's the political influence that affects the capacity of women to testify or not testify. So this can be a support for them. But now if the soldier was if the soldiers who raped them were Egyptian, would that would they have testified? Now this is something that we don't know. So these investigations created a direct link with what we have today. Let's go back to this later on. Let's speak later on about what's happening now. You said something about the testimony of women. Maya, hello. You're an artist. An Arab artist, a Lebanese artist, you're a female, and you represent many things. Also, in the fantasy, in the world fantasy, you represent something specific about uh, women working in the Arab arts, and we spoke to, together about the different combinations of identity. Uh, different identities, the political identities, the real identities. In your work and the work of the group, of how do you work on breaking these identities? But please don't uh, go past the five minutes. In my work as director and artist in the Zouka group, especially in our shows outside Lebanon, we always face this dilemma. Actually, it's not a dilemma, it's a way of thinking, a thinking proce process to see how we want to perform, what we want to perform about. It's also linked to the language that we use and to the extent that we explain our texts. And this is something continuous that we always ask to ourselves because it's also important to convey a certain idea and explain it to others and make it clear and there is also the necess necessity of representing your identity and between both there is a great gap so this is our responsibility as artists not to fall in this hole so in order for it to become smooth we need to be authentic with ourselves we need to be genuine we need to start with ourselves being individuals 
living in this region without taking into consideration our cultural legacy or the identities that are imposed on us. We need this, of course, to start from our legacy, but from its wider sense. If we want to have some kind of integrity, we shouldn't carry a certain uh, narrow identity. We can go from our legacy, from our individual life, and find something that also is interesting for our society. When I work on a text, I cannot only base it on my life as an individual. Yes, of course, the group should do that, should do that but also should be based so personal to be political, so the group also should be able to find something that will make the audience interact with them. So it doesn't mean that I have to perform something that is related to the identity that is expected from me. So we want to do this also in a positive way. We are constructed of different layers, of different pieces of information. Layla and myself, for example, could be put in the same spot, but it doesn't mean that we are the same people or we do the same thing. Especially when we're performing in front of a foreign or a Western audience, when we worked on our show about gender, we used popular stories and also imaginary stories for children. So we decided to work on Snow White, Sleeping Beauty, not because uh, these stories have come to colonial, colonialize us as uh, stories, no, but uh, because we know these stories since our early childhood. Now, of course, there are Arab, uh, Arabic versions of these stories, but I know grim versions. Not because Disney took it, uh, it means that I cannot uh, use it myself and just speak and uh, think about uh, colonialism here. No, I can still use it, but the idea is that I shouldn't put myself in a certain model that is expected from me. I need to do something that is related to my reality as an artist and that is linked to the narrow sphere and to the wider sphere as well. This leads me to Tony. When we were preparing for this session, uh, immediately when I told you that you will be in the colonizing the art session, you said, no, but the Arab artists are not occupied artists, they are global artists, they're everywhere. So in uh, comparison with what Maya said and Laila before her said, could you speak a little bit about the place of the modern independent Arab artists today in the Arab sphere? How do you see the Arab artists today? Of course, uh, there are words that I didn't use, like the global Arab artists. No, yes, maybe this is something that I used says the moderator. This is nothing called the Arab uh, movie or the Arab uh, artist. Let's say from the Arab countries, whether they're uh, Syrians, Lebanese, etc. Yes, of course. I want to say something about uh, decolonizing the arts. I'm personally convinced that this has to do with the post-colonial studies because uh, they have uh, done a lot of destruction to our arts. This has produced monsters. We all know them. Maybe we know them through the internet. And you can find the, this in politics, uh, in uh, social studies, etc. So when I hear about this, I have this apprehension that no, I don't want to be in that place. I want to be somewhere else. This is on one side. On the other side, there is also the personal experience and what I see around me. There are specific topics that you see have become obsolete. So, when you are invited to go to Europe, to the United States, and when you participate in exhibitions here and there, and when you see that uh, there is a contemporary art scene, 
you see that there are also other things that you should address and this cannot be uh, summarized with you being Arab or not uh, by you having been uh, colon colonized by the French or not. No, you need to know that there are also topics that are more important, like what, sir? For example, like how to deal with a globalized uh, culture that we see everywhere. Let me give you a quick example. A few days ago, I was in Amsterdam. To the south of Amsterdam, there is a region where they're working on real estate speculation that looks a lot like what we're having now in Solidaire and in uh, Skatleblad, Beirut Digital District. So I was able to see the same speculation, the same architectural uh, trend, the same intentions meaning that they wanted to move the downtown and put it elsewhere and the result is the same there is a quasi empty city there is no one living there and they don't see the people it's only accumulation of square meters for investment so if you're colonized by this or that if we're in post-colonialism or not there is something that is happening now and is more important than what we are supposed to carry. They speak a lot about the white man. Who is the white man? What does that mean? We, this happened in Beirut and this happened in Amsterdam, the speculation. So there is nothing called the white man. You need to have uh, causes that are really important and that are worth hearing about. So these are the things that I would like to deal with and speak about. I never say that we are a global or globalized artist. No. Now, about uh, globalization. Hello, Ras. Also, when we spoke, when you were preparing for this session, what Tony said, especially when he spoke now about the globalized uh, cities, I remember also that you said to me that you are searching for the non-globalized cities or to uh, deglobalize some of the cities and that you always search for a difference and that if now we deglobalize artists, this would be something good or of the arts and that we need to decolonize the arts. Can, we, can you please explain more to us your idea? Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Shukran Jazeelan. Can I talk a little bit about the contemporary arts? I think I don't want to talk about the things I did because uh, you can forget it. I want to talk about the ideas of the students because I think the students all over the world will be the uh, ones who decide on the contemporary arts in 10 years. And when I'm now looking what they are doing, what my students are doing in, uh, in the university, uh, sometimes it irritates me because they're working with uh, robots. They are working with uh, robots in their arms and uh, they're working with uh, digital systems together with the public, it means there's no more actors, no more uh, public. All are, in a way, actors. Uh, the actors, the professional actors, are only the guides of the other ones, in a way. And uh, what comes in to on top of that since uh, about two years is that uh, because we are cooperating with, uh, for example, the Hong Kong and Peking, uh, they are making common projects together with uh, Chinese students. But the Chinese don't come to uh, Zurich, or the Zurich students don't go to China. They are, Zurich students are guiding Chinese public through the sea of Zurich, telling stories. And the Chinese public uh, uh, stays in uh, China, but is in Zurich. Uh, and all these things, which for sure are really quite interesting, 
uh, provoked us to make um, to start the research project called gamification in uh, theater. Gamification. Gamification. What do you mean? Game uh, included in theater. What would that mean? What would that this do with the theater? Uh, that means that the performing arts, uh, the performing space is a digital one, or at least no more on stage. The performing arts can be in two cities at the same time, uh, in two different continents. And uh, that's why we are for sure thinking what does that really mean for uh, the performing arts? And another problem with uh, it's quite important uh, in our university is that the head of the university uh, puts the internationalization on the first level. It means uh, he created uh, Zurich University in Hong Kong and uh, asked me to create uh, another Zurich University in Singapore. And we in the theater film and dance department refused. And we started to, because we said that that's the goal life cities get. He said you have to do that in Singapore because it is the most goal life city in the, in the world. And we said yeah, but that's why we are not interested. We, we are only interested in the differences. That's why we started uh, uh, now uh, collaboration over three years with um, the University of Guadalupe in Burkina Faso um, and another one in Sao Paulo. And the aim is that we learn, we all learn, also the professors, the teachers, but the students also, to deal with these differences, to work together with the students and the artists in these places, with these differences, not to equalize, because it's not interesting, interesting but to, to make quite an interesting work together with these uh, differences. And uh, that's why, for me, it's not only deglobalizing, it's much more also to put the local quality, the local problems, the local things on the first level. And as we know, local means today for sure the inclusion of internationality that lands on this topic. Um, the Mahali, Concept concerning independent uh, culture and the art, and how you are dealing with the subject and uh, dealing with uh, independent art. Good morning, thank you, Jumana. Independent. This is a very important and positive point, and uh, I will add a question to your questions. How shall we uh, realize or achieve independence? Independence is when we take independent decisions, so when we have the frameworks for our for people working in the art field to work and to achieve their projects without having anything imposed from an outside party. The most important thing is how to create a framework that will enable the artist or the artistic production to be open 
to create partnership and to act with the others as peers uh, and not feel inferior and feel at the same time that he can uh, have his freedom, his independence uh, when it comes to performance. Now we are a little bit moving from the production to the institution and that is as well related to our discussion in, which means that now the institution is working to put uh, a framework for the production of the art or when the institution itself is producing art so we are talking a lot about to what extent cultural ex institutions are able to be independent and not uh, uh, promote imported things in terms of presenting arts that are not imported, that are purely local. And in our region now, there's a big interest in the distribution of art and taking into consideration this independence. And I think, to a big extent, that this is a challenge because how we can create models and uh, frameworks that respect these local specific, uh, specificities are very important while presenting you as well uh, in, international, uh, in an international uh, framework as well. The experience of the interactive uh, theater in the region was a model of bringing something that is not related to the region but adapting it and uh, I do believe that we've realized a big success in that field and here I'm not talking about integrating uh, social uh, issues in the, uh, in the theater but I'm saying that the model used in planning or implementing a project of talking about an institution means that there is something imposed from outside or you can't talk about anything local or discuss it in a deep way. So based on that, I do believe that we can go deeper in that uh, question. Now there is a big interest in the region and we need to ask uh, ourselves in the framework of all these changes or at the light of all these changes, to what extent can we preserve our local specificity and characteristics. In the world, the tools that are used, to what extent are uh, uh, safeguarding the independence? Maya uh, and uh, Leila talked about uh, that point as well and now I'm trying to to see to ask to what extent the institutions are preserving the independence of the uh, artist not only in the framework of respecting a local characteristic but respecting that he's coming from a certain country and presenting uh, his art you've talked about the changes happening right now and now I'll go back to Tony Tony, from uh, uh, we, now we will move to a speak mouseless, which was a performance you presented in 2012. And I will read what you said. I'm going to read in English. So this is Tony's statement. Uh, when the revolution in the Arab world started and the press introduced the term the Arab Spring, many artists from the region, including myself, were often solicited by European cultural institutions to speak about what's going on. This in itself seems, seems harmless. They wanted to know and we wanted to speak. At least this is how it looked at first. Now the debate has shifted and the interest has won. The themes, today, the themes today revolve around radical Islam, the fears of minorities, chemical weapons, and so on. Things on which contemporary artists are not considered experts. 
كده كلمة اشرح لنا أكثر احكي لنا عن فكرة ماوس وأنا شو إنه كثير مهم هذا الكلام بالفعلا على صعيد التحولات اللي حصلت على صعيد فيما I am convinced that in order to face the globalization that is necessary, we cannot start from the local. Because this duality, local against the globalized, can lead us to very bad consequences. It wants, especially if it wants to safeguard some things, what needs to let go will let go. So that was the idea of the work. Because when I was asked in Berlin to talk about Arab revolution during a symposium, uh, concerning the Arab Spring, it wasn't the first invitation. Uh, I had received many emails and the, the bulk of the demand made me suspicious why they want to hear me uh, speaking or to hear us speaking. Why? So here as well we can take the West uh, Orient model as well. Maybe they want to know more about that. But I said something else. I said that they want to accumulate knowledge, uh, quantitative knowledge, in order to know more about the subject because this subject is covered by the media. So we need to know more about this. We need to have archives and then the archives will need to be opened for people to have a look at them. So that is very similar to the work uh, done during the revolution, uh, the uh, Renaissance, excuse me, in uh, Europe, to have all the world under a single roof, such as in the museum or in the zoo. All these buildings where we uh, compile things from different countries. And that is similar to the uh, capital uh, accumulation. We uh, accumulate uh, capital without having uh, an open horizon. Uh, the Umberto Eco, in the name of the Rose, talked about a library that was working in a different way and who read the, the novel. It's a very uh, a lovely li library because it's like the word and uh, not divided in uh, subject but uh, uh, divided uh, uh, how uh, or based on from where the books uh, are. So it's a very strange idea. I won't go in the details of the novel. But when I realized my work, I was completely silent. I decided not to talk. I had only a PowerPoint presentation. And the idea was that I've asked uh, my guest, my host, that after I finish uh, uh, the presentation, I want someone to come and give me an envelope with the salary that was uh, agreed uh, upon. So, and uh, that happened as well. Uh, I received the envelope. I've counted the money in public and put it in my pocket. It was to say that we are a part of this economy. I've criticized, okay, but at the end of the day, I am a part of that economy that I am criticizing because there's nothing outside that economy. And if we assume that there's an economy outside the globalization or ideas outside the globalization, that would be an illusion, a deadly illusion. 
because we will be outside of the history and the dilemmas that we need to face. Uh, economy, Leila. When we've talked about the subject of decolonizing the arts, you've talked about uh, the uh, dilemmas that uh, an artist of the region can face and the contradictions that he might face. Here we want to dwell in the details of financing and funding, but uh, there are always parties that can help the artist promote his work and give him visibility. So how an imbalance in the uh, powers can influence the content of artistic works, if you can uh, dwell on this <laughs> briefly. <laughs> We were talking, we were focusing more on the fact that and Tony mentioned that Maya as well concerning these subjects, choosing the subject uh, will make it easy um, for us to disseminate the work, yes or no. And sometimes studying other subjects can uh, make the world much more acceptable. Uh, maybe presenting uh, the art as not a Muslim but uh, an Arab art. And uh, the, uh, the effect of this uh, study on uh, the work on the art for it to be accepted in the arena of contemporary work and be a developed version of it. But as well we have conditions concerning the aesthetic dimension. The show should be light, easy. And if one needs to work, and to be a part of the market to a certain extent, the, uh, maybe moving from a place to another is, uh, is a must. And people that are not a part of Europe or uh, the States will have to endure a long time before starting to move and before being accepted. Maya, a guest was supposed to be with us, Fadel Jaidi, and I wanted to ask him a question, but I will ask it to you now, concerning the uh, your work in the Fakh and the uh, cultural translation. We talked to you and I about uh, uh, cultural translation. I wanted to ask our guest, when uh, God Otage was performed in Odeon in 2006, it was the first Arab show presented in Cap d'Europe. So you in Zoukak, so it was the very first Tunisian men performing on that, uh, in that venue. I know that uh, in Zoukak you are moving a lot, you are performing in Europe, in the state, and you are training uh, students in universities in the States. This is very rare because usually it's the uh, total opposite. So what are your comments and uh, can you tell us more about your experience, especially when training uh, students in New York? or elsewhere. 
I will uh, give you an example. We were working with a group of youth in Houston last year, and the subject was very large, and then we worked with them, we write uh, scripts with them, and we try to focus on letting the artist express himself and that in our work as well we start uh, the, uh, from the individual and then we move to a much uh, more deeper uh, subject or vast subject we wanted to work on uh, women warriors but some students wanted to work on abortion because we were in Texas and uh, the restrictive abortion rights were uh, discussed and uh, an imposition on abortion was discussed. Some students were uh, doing or organizing a campaign. Uh, they were holding uh, pictures of uh, 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 posters and uh, pictures uh, reflecting on that subject. They wanted to work on that subject. We started some research and each and everyone was working on specific issues, uh, explosions that uh, targeted abortion clinics in Houston and Texas in general and we thought as well about an incident that happened in Iraq where an explosion as well targeted a clinic performing abortion and the discussion concerning that subject was one of the most important discussions that enable us to understand the bulk of work we have to do as artists today away from our comfort zone when we go and perform in Paris or London the cosmopolitan cities that are accustomed to work coming from our region and adapting it and the difference, the difference between that and working with students in Houston uh, not knowing anything about the arts uh, coming from different uh, contacts and the difference between that and going to rural areas in France so this is the important work that will highlight the fact that we have a role to play in making sure that today there's no difference between an explosion targeting a Houston clinic by a Christian conservatives and an explosion targeting a clinic in Iraq uh, perpetrated by Islamists. We've discussed this, we've talked with the student, and she considered that this incident, the incident in Iraq, is something very far uh, away, and that in all cases the woman in Iraq would have been killed by her parents. So we've explained that no, that, uh, parents won't necessarily kill her, and that the contact is similar, whether in Texas or in Baghdad. The discussions were very interesting and I think we have to do that uh, most often. We talked about uh, teaching arts and to one extent uh, uh, arts coming from outside, non-European arts are present in the curricula. Uh, in universities in Europe and you talked about your personal experience in that field and how you are trying always to find the new things, uh, exchange programs, your own uh, work, your own efforts in, in order to have a multiple content and what is your idea or your uh, opinion about that?
artistic works. Critics reference itself. You have more than one experience in that field. First of all, in terms of uh, writing your uh, PhD uh, here in the University of St. Joseph in Lebanon. Uh, and all of the studies that you are trying to undertake in order to uh, shed light on the subject. So what are your comments briefly on concerning that subject? <laughs> I will give you an example. During the last uh, two years, I had uh, the opportunity to work on uh, texts for Syrian writers <laughs> that were written from 2000 to 2015. I was uh, working on 15 texts as a part of my uh, of my university work in order to see how the uh, Syrian writer is uh, trying to see himself through the world. And uh, to tell you the truth, I first wanted to focus on the discourse in order to depict that, uh, that component. And first of all, I tried to see the narratives, anything that can help me. And then the references I have in Arabic or the translated references, especially that I had many references in French. And I tried to see how I can translate them and find solutions to that. After a bit of research and after reading the text, you see that you cannot start that way. You cannot take a school or a curricula and see to what extent the text are adapted to it, yes or no. And I felt that I won't reach any uh, result simply the philosophical and social question for Syrian writers are different from the causes or the motives that led to the elaboration of that curricula. So I wanted to focus, so focusing on the meaning and the applying the curricula, the curricula as they are cannot help me uh, reach that. But when I was, uh, if we go back to Foucault, the, uh, the authority, uh, etc., uh, I feel the difference. I'm not here making a difference between a, curric uh, a curricula, a European curricula that cannot be adapted to an Arabic text. There's nothing, as we've mentioned, called European or Arab uh, theater. But using the curricula, and the problem is problem problematic in Arabic because there's no critical reference. Uh, studying that uh, that text or that curricula. On the level of the terminology, we need to find a way to translate the terminology before you said Tamsil Iada Tamsil, we said it was representation. But if we don't do that, we won't even know what the term is in Arabic. So there is a great scarcity in this regard, and there is a weakness in uh, Arab experiences. For example, when I see Layla's work, I can see it more in Europe rather than in here. And I think that Zukak's work also uh, is better situated in Europe as well, in the European streets, more than in here, more than in our region. And uh, this goes back also to the history of art. Where are arts? Do we really have arts? Where is it? Where does it exist? We need to ask questions about this topic. And sometimes 
we don't see questions at all. Add to that, the another question, how can we help our artists in this region? Maybe they have a production, or maybe they can read a foreign language, so that we will have a problem building knowledge in this regard, because translation in the Arab world is regressing on all levels. And sometimes in some fields, we find that translation has stopped 20 or 30 years ago. Thank you very much. Uh, you have uh, uh, spoken about something uh, that we are really suffering from. Uh, now we uh, will uh, open the door for the audience. We can take three to four questions because we don't have enough time. And uh, Tony has uh, Tony the lecture. Um, <laughs> yes, please. Good morning, I was able to find myself linked to what Tony said. Sometimes I like more to see artists' works uh, rather than listen to their words. And when he was silent, I think he did something important. Also, when he took the money on the panel, I think also it was very important. The problem is that we have a capacity to take money and to do presentations and then to criticize the system. But in order to criticize the wider system, now maybe in our countries we are working against a smaller system in order to open spaces for ourselves and others. But we need to look at the wider system. So it's not really ironic to see that uh, one of the founders here is a newspaper that represents the old system itself. Although I have a long war and a long fight against them, but here I am. So we need to redefine the population, we need to redefine the resistance. What we are lacking today, and we spoke a little bit about it yesterday, we spoke about liberalism, neoliberalism, maybe now there is neo-neoliberalism. And yesterday we spoke about a German institution that was supporting something in Tunisia and Egypt, and then they decided that there was no air transition in Egypt, so there was no need for the funding. So uh, now maybe I don't have my coffee, but I can say that we were not insightful enough. Who told you that the transition has stopped or that the shift has stopped? Who told you that now you can put a full stop and that we are going to something new? They sometimes say that the change has stopped, that this change wave has stopped. And like Tony said, that they want us to speak about chemical weapons and other things that are actually permanent. There will always be a disaster. But when other people, when technocrats put a full stop and they want to control our work as artists and they're limiting our work, when a journalist asks a female in downtown during the demonstration, what, what do you feel as a woman here, but you're just looking at the rest and you don't even care about their presence and the demonstration, you're just thinking about the audience? Maybe what is essential here and what is substantial and we need to understand we're not the Galapagos, meaning that we're not going to discover how dinosaurs worked, how, where they were, etc., and where, how they were put in the laboratories. Thank you. Hasan Kretli, I think that a big part of this independence issue, and this was said before but in different forms, so the samples or the forms, uh, the, the stereotypes should be changed because in Europe they were able to open sources for us. When we deal with what we have inherited, then we can transform it into sources and then other people also can use our sources. So a big part of our definition of independence is what is material. 
I really like to what he said. We were in the festival that Rez invited us to in Zurich spectacle that was years ago. And the discussion was about our work and how it's successful when we do something strange. Because when we do something about the Egyptian heritage, people can see it as exotic and then we can market it. But this is not actually what we're doing and people are not speaking about our work anymore. But at the beginning there was this idea that it's either we keep it exotic or then it should be familiar, meaning that it resembles what others do. But the idea of doing something special that is neither exotic nor familiar, that was the problem. So, in order to do something specific, I mean. and then we have this talk about the other. So, can I accept the idea that I am the other, or maybe I'm just somebody else? So, the whole time we have these traps, and we need to avoid these traps so that we can reach a dialogue that is really interesting with the audience and with the people. Hi everybody. <coughs> I guess first I'll start by giving a little... Oh. Does everyone know that we have a seven part Howl Round series coming out of this conference? So um, I'm going to say a little bit that I'll end up in one of those articles. I'm going to riff a little bit on the old colony which is in the title. We heard the word gentrification, we heard the word globalization. I would like to put out there that the global real estate market is conspiring with the global credit market, and that the former military industrial complex is quickly figuring out how to use these two markets to assert itself. Uh, about a year ago, Professor Lahoud crossed the street at Ashkelawan said something that stuck with me for the last year, and that is he said that the construction market would decide when the Syrian war is ending. I want to pick up just quickly on Sao Paulo, as it was one of the cities mentioned, and it's my home city. Um, we see the fetish of these cities in the global south as it's termed, and there was an example of a project called Novo Luz, where the uh, Swiss architecture firm Herzog de Moron won a competition to build a new performing arts center in the older neighborhood of Luce, thus calling it Novo Luce. Some activists stopped this project, and when I heard what Professor Lebut said last year about uh, Syria, I wondered, will we see global architecture competitions in Damascus in the near future? Check out the articles on how uh, I suggest that we let them answer these three heavy questions. Anar, <laughs> Kontari, uh, do you have like comments? No? Do you want? Okay, so we continue. They don't want to say anything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, thank you. Um, I just want to say that uh, I think that separating the issue of funding uh, from this discussion is very um, risky and dangerous because um, uh, this will drive, um, will drive us to get stuck in issues of identities and uh, conspiracies uh, against those identities. Uh, while the core issue of colonization and decolonization cannot be separated from interest and from economy, economic uh, I think so. Uh, so, uh, I don't understand uh, why did you want to do the separation? Uh, yes. We have another question that will be allocated 
to funding. That's that easy. I would like to say in Arabic that the idea is that when we separate the economic dimension from colonization of colonialism, the risk is that sometimes we fear that there are conspiracies related to identities, to removing identities, and the whole relationship changes. This is why I consider the separation as being dangerous. So now the narrative that we cannot see how culture is sometimes exploited by religion. This is also something economic, and it's not just for, uh, it's not actually for a religious uh, war. Thank you. We could continue this discussion later on. I think that a big part of it is a cultural war, is a war about narratives, or right stuff, and it has also a cultural damage. But as I said, I had a question for you, but I forgot to do so about the political dimension in taking and making decisions. For example, the partnerships that you have and you work with different donors and with the European partners, so after that, maybe we can speak about this, about this later on. We will, of course, remember this. Hello. Concerning the title, Decolonizing the Art, First of all, I think that we have given a lot of force and strength to the word colonization. And when we say colonization, there is always resistance. I don't think that we can colonize arts at all in any way. And it is not something that we have in our region because I don't see that we have a society with one identity so that another character is given to us. In Lebanon, we have uh, thousands of cultures, not uh, thousands, tens of thousands of cultures, so no one uh, can occupy them because we already have the different identities. And if you look now at what's happening in Lebanon or at the region, we don't have a unified kind of arts. Here in the same room, we have 70 ways of dealing with arts if we're just speaking about performing arts. And in other countries where we see that the colonialism aspect is still very strong, that like, just like in India, we see that their tradition is very strong, and this relationship with heritage and with culture is very strong. So I think it's more strong where colonialism aspects are still so what is the local art that is really close to the heritage of our ancestors, like the Dakti, for example? So what are we going to ask to do so that is working since the 70s? Of course, we're not doubting this belonging to Lebanon, but what should I tell him? Come and do Who is he? Alain Buisson. He is a francophone director from the 70s, and he was a director, a director when no one was working in the not 70s, before that, before the 70s. So on the other side, and it's something really strange if we go back to what Alma said the colonization aspects today are the opportunism, opportunism culture for example that we have. and we look at the others like others look at us and then, then they say that we are being colonized this is so weird so instead of speaking about getting decolonized, then better than I'm not talking about this topic. Better. Thank you. Later on during the coffee break. I'll be really quick. Thank you, Jamal. Let's use the Syrian art as the model here, but it resembles a lot of other artistic experiences. If you consider that there is an artistic experience for one country, like in a fight way. 
I think that this question of quarantine occupation of arms, this is the issue of polarization. It's like the polarization that you have on the internal as well as well, not just what you have from abroad. So the internal context also plays here a great role because we have politics, uh, political polarization, the social polarization that the legacy and the history, and if we're preserving the identity, whether it's uh, the Arab entity, the religious entity, the sectarian identity, etc., and the difference between the modernity and the tradition inside and outside. So it's uh, something normal that arts and are part of this dynamic. It's not a question also about who is stronger and who is weaker, although there is this question of who is relying on whom and these things that we deal with uh, on a daily basis. So the main question for me is eventually at the end of the day within these polarizations not only in arts the decision that is made and this was something mentioned by Abdullah and I have this question especially for the Syrian arts is the decision made by the individual art that is working on this product or is it the decision that is made by the institution an institution, of the institution that has a real vision a vision for a certain cultural change with object, objectives and goals so, do we have to answer the question ourselves, or should we take our own decisions in an organic way that is in harmony with our objectives, then maybe in the long run we will be answering this question. So, I have a question, are we maybe wasting our energy when we always try as artists and as an art sector to find an answer to this question, we shouldn't waste our energy here. Because maybe we need to take to make, to make our own decisions organically. And we need to see this negotiation space and we understand it. And eventually this question will answer itself by itself. Yes, that's what, yes, we need to be aware of this issue. That's it, you're right. Thank you, Rana. Good morning, everyone. Of, uh, cultural colonization. I can feel it in my body after 10 days of traveling and three days in Beirut. But all those idiots finding these expensive cars and getting stuck in traffic and doing nothing but producing pollution. I think uh, I like uh, Tony's position uh, because it leaves us with a very important question, and that is how to identify and uh, organize against the, the forces of global political and, and economic hegemony. And it's a question for us as the intellectuals, artists, and civil society. Last but not least, I think when we're talking about the neocolonialism, the issue of soft power is very important to consider, as is the ability of getting others to want what you desire. And uh, there is a no shame in uh, recognizing that we all have been influenced by Western culture, one way or another, uh, to become a subject of an object of colonized uh, cultural colonization means actually to be ignorant about the roots of that. By better understanding the Western culture and its dominance and its global dominance, which is not Western anymore, we actually become a uh, active uh, subject we can tackle and in terms of identity, economy, culture, whatever we want to be engaged into a dialogue and to organize a global uh, civil uh, society against those forces that you are so, so well uh, recognizing and pointing out. بقترح انه اذا ممكن يعني بدأي اكل واحد يعني يختصر يعني يلخص جواب عام على هي الاسئله ممكن تكتبها. في في نوع شكل عالي كثير قضايا مثلا كلمات مثل غرق وشرق انا ما بستعمل كلمات من نوع عضوي او Being organic artists, also there are these are words that I don't use. This is an, a misunderstanding. I'm not speaking about you specifically, but this idea of this organic uh, intellectual. These are things that I don't use. Microphone, please. 
Sorry, we can't hear her intervention without the answer. Because uh, these uh, terms always make me become alert, and I agree with what Taman has said. We are the other in the colonial thinking. If you accept this, you don't have to accept to be in a position where you need to tell others who you are, what your identity is, and like have a performer identity. But also, it's not necessary to say that if I don't want to do this, then I need to take the other forms so that I become familiar. No. This is not about the specificity of the individual. Individual is something uh, that was in the past, in the 19th century. Now there are specific topics, specific issues that need answers. We need to know what these questions are. We need to identify them. We need to find them. And we need to find a pertinent and a relevant answer, not just any answer. So this is my own opinion. Had I had a longer time, I would have been maybe softer. <laughs> so I apologize if I was a bit rude. Thank you. I agree to what Rohit Bahid has said. And I think that what we should do is not uh, related to the region where we are, meaning it's not related to the Arab art only, Arab arts only, it's related to us in general. And it's about working with people who believe that we need to go out of these frameworks, go out of the box, especially that we're speaking here about the economic system. So we need to know also that we're not in big numbers. So the quantity of people that really believe in different definitions for individuals and really believe in a different thinking, a different way of thinking about arts, like Tony said, and about the topics that you should work on. So these people, we can find them anywhere in the world, but it depends on a certain way of thinking, certain way or on a certain culture, they don't belong to a certain class or to a specific class of intellectuals or educated people, no. But we need a way to identify each, to identify each other and create a certain coalition so that we can work on global issues to be able to fight this huge thing that is somehow dangerous and makes us feel like ants. It's like the whole time we need to justify ourselves and represent ourselves with what is available. I'll stop here. Thank you. So once again, I agree with what Rana said, and it actually meets what Tony said. What Maya just said is that we need to look at the wider picture. It's very important to see this bigger picture to be able to think about these changes. What I really liked with you in this uh, panel and this session is uh, the sensitivity that you gave to each term, to each word. And I understand what you said, and I think that we can speak about it in the future session about the funding. I only have a quick observation. I think that this is a sensitive topic because uh, the entries to work with artists here is happening with a political background. So this is maybe something that we could uh, discuss uh, in length in the coming session. Layla, you have half a minute. Tony has to go, he has a lesson. So this is a direct threat. I want to speak a little bit about the relationship between the local, local and the global. 
I think also that what is important is the relationship between the individual and the group or the community. So I have these power structures and each of the artists uh, has a different uh, tactics for dealing with all these complexities that we face in our daily life. I want to unofficer the Maracas. Typing everything. 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 Typing ever